Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In a previous couple of lectures, we have developed and explained the torque expression for the single excited rotational motion systems. Also, we show the importance of the inductance variation with respect to rotor position in developing the torque. In this lecture and the coming two lectures, we will explain and develop the torque expression for the rotational double excited systems. Since the change of inductance is important factor in developing the torque, therefore, let's first understand the available inductances of the double excited systems and how these inductances are varies with respect to rotor position. Assume we have the following rotational double excited system. As we can see, this system consists of stator and rotor and two excitation coils. Since this magnetic circuit or system has two coils, then this system will have three main inductances. These inductances are the stator self-inductance, rotor self-inductance, and the mutual inductance between the stator and rotor coils. Please review the self and mutual inductance lecture as it has more details about these inductances. Basically, we need to recall the following two equations of the magnetic field linkages of the two coils magnetic system, where Psi S is the total stator magnetic field linkage of the stator coil and it is equal to Psi SS plus minus Psi SR. Psi SS is the magnetic field linkage produced by the stator current and links the stator coil. Psi SR is the magnetic field linkage produced by the rotor current and links the stator coil. Psi R is the total rotor magnetic field linkage of the rotor coil and it is equal to Psi RR plus minus Psi RS. Psi RR is the magnetic field linkage produced by the rotor current and links the rotor coil. Psi RS is the magnetic field linkage produced by the stator current and links the rotor coil. Note that the positive sign means that the rotor and stator magnetic fields are in the same direction. The negative sign means that the rotor and stator magnetic fields are in opposite direction. These two equations can be represented by the inductances of the magnetic circuit as shown. LSS represents the stator self-inductance. LSR and LRS represent the mutual inductance between the stator and rotor. LRR represents the rotor self-inductance. Let's first explain the stator self-inductance LSS of this double excited system. The stator self-inductance LSS represents the inductance of the magnetic field produced by the stator excitation current IS only and links the stator coil. The rotor current IR is zero during the calculation of the stator self-inductance. So we can remove the rotor coil for now because it is not contributing to the stator self-inductance. The stator self-inductance can be calculated as follows. LSS equal to Psi S over IS at IR equal to zero. The stator self-inductance of this system changes with respect to rotor position because the air gap seen by the stator magnetic field is changes with respect to rotor position. That means when the rotor is at vertical position, the air gap seen by the stator magnetic field is small. Therefore, the reluctance is small and the inductance is large. When the rotor at horizontal position, the air gap seen by the stator magnetic field is large. Therefore, the reluctance is large and the inductance is small. Previously, we have proved that the stator self-inductance changes two times with respect to rotor position and can be represented as shown. Now since the stator self-inductance changes and it is not constant, then we expect a torque component 
produced because of the change of the stator self-inductance. The torque component which is developed as a contribution of the change of stator self-inductance can be called reluctance torque. Now let's move on to rotor self-inductance LRR. The rotor self-inductance represents the inductance of the magnetic field produced by the rotor excitation current IR only and links the rotor coil. The stator current IS is zero during the calculation of the rotor self-inductance. So we can remove the stator coil because it is not contributing to the rotor self-inductance as shown. The rotor self-inductance can be calculated as follows. LRR equal Psi R over IR at IS equal to zero. Based on the geometry of this magnetic circuit, the rotor self-inductance changes with respect to rotor position because the air gap seen by the rotor magnetic field is changing with respect to rotor position. That means when the rotor is in vertical position, the air gap seen by the rotor magnetic field is a small, reluctance is small, and therefore inductance is large. When the rotor is at horizontal position, the air gap seen by the rotor magnetic field is large, the reluctance is large, and therefore inductance is small. Note that the rotor magnetic field is rotating with rotor position. Now if we measure and plot the rotor self-inductance, we can find that the rotor self-inductance is changing two times with respect to rotor position and can be represented as shown. As you can see, the rotor self-inductance changes and it is not constant. Therefore, we expect a torque component produced as a result of the change of rotor self-inductance. Again, the torque component that is developed as a contribution of the change of rotor self-inductance can be called reluctance torque. Now let's move on to the mutual inductance. The mutual inductance exists because of the interaction between magnetic fields of the stator and rotor excitation currents. In other words, if both coils have currents, then definitely we will have magnetic field interaction between the two coils. The mutual inductance value depends on how how much magnetic field that is generated by one coil and going to link the second coil. The mutual inductance can be calculated mathematically using any of the following equations. LSR equal to Psi S over IR at IS equal to zero or LSR equal to Psi R over IS at IR equal to zero. Note that LSR equal to LRS because they have same geometry. The mutual inductance can be donated by the capital letter M. Now let's explain how the mutual inductance is changing with respect to rotor position. Let's investigate the mutual inductance LRS as an example. Note that LRS is equal to LSR and equal to M. When theta is equal to zero, the magnetic field produced by the current IS is fully linking the rotor coil. Also, we know that at this position, the stator and rotor magnetic fields axis will be aligned in the same direction. As a result, the mutual inductance LRS is positive peak or positive maximum. Now when theta is equal to 90 degree, the magnetic field produced by the current IS does not link with the rotor coil because the stator magnetic field axis is perpendicular to rotor magnetic field axis. Therefore, the mutual inductance LRS is zero when theta is equal to 90 degree. Now at theta equal to 180 degree, the magnetic field produced by the current IS is fully linking the rotor coil. However, at this position, the stator and rotor magnetic fields axis are aligned but in opposite direction. 
Therefore, the mutual inductance LRS will have a negative peak or negative maximum. In general, this behavior of mutual inductance can be represented mathematically as follows. M of theta equal M hat cosine theta. This inductance can be represented graphically as shown. So the mutual inductance can be negative value as well as positive value depending on the rotor position. As we can see, the mutual inductance changes and it is not constant. Therefore, we expect a torque component produced as a result of the change of mutual inductance. From all above, we can conclude that the stator self-inductance and rotor self-inductance and the mutual inductance are all changing with rotor position for this rotating system as shown. Therefore, the torque expression of this double excited system will have three terms. The first term, T1, is related to the change of stator self-inductance. The second term, T2, is related to the change of rotor self-inductance. And the third term, T3, is related to the change of mutual inductance. The torque expression of this double excited system will be derived mathematically in the upcoming lecture. It should be noted here that this double excited system has special structure or geometry that makes the stator self-inductance and rotor self-inductance and mutual inductance changing with respect to rotor position. This is not general rule for all double or multiple excited machines to have all these inductances changes with respect to rotor position. Most of the important machines in practice have one or two of these inductances changing with respect to rotor position. So the physical situation structure or the geometry of the machine determine the inductances that change with rotor position and therefore the type of torque components produced by the machine. Let's take an example. This cross-section figure represents a cross-section of this basic induction machine structure where the stator and rotor have cylindrical structure. The stator and rotor have excitation coils as shown. Let's remove the rotor coil to investigate the stator self-inductance as shown. It is very clear that the air gap length seen by the stator magnetic field path does not change with respect to rotor position because the air gap is uniform. Since the air gap does not change with respect to rotor position, the stator self-inductance LSS of theta will be constant. Therefore, the rate change of the stator self-inductance is zero value. So this machine does not develop torque component due to the stator self-inductance. Now let's remove the stator coil to investigate the rotor self-inductance as shown. It is very clear that the air gap length seems by the magnetic field generated by the rotor excitation does not change with respect to rotor position. Basically, even though the rotor magnetic field is rotating with the rotor, the rotor magnetic field path will see same air gap length at any rotor position. Since the air gap does not change with respect to rotor position, the rotor self-inductance LRR of theta will be constant. Therefore, the rate change of the rotor self-inductance will be zero value. So this machine does not develop torque due to rotor self-inductance because the rotor self-inductance is constant. Now let's keep both the stator and rotor coils to investigate the mutual inductance between the stator and rotor coils. The mutual inductance value depends on how much magnetic field that is generated by one coil and going to link the second coil. If the rotor position is at theta equal to zero, the stator magnetic field is fully linking the rotor coil. Now, since the stator and rotor magnetic fields are in the same direction, the mutual inductance is positive peak value. Now, if we move the rotor position at theta 
equal 90 degree, the stator magnetic field does not link with rotor coil. Therefore, the mutual inductance is zero at this rotor position. Now, if we move the rotor position at theta equal 180 degree, the stator magnetic field is fully linking the rotor coil. However, the stator and rotor magnetic fields are in opposite direction. Therefore, the mutual inductance value is negative peak value. Basically, we can represent the mutual inductance mathematically by m of theta equal m hat cosine theta, where m hat is the peak value. Now, if we summarize the relationship of all inductances with rotor position of this machine structure as shown, we can clearly notice that the mutual inductance is the only inductance that changes with rotor position. Therefore, we expect only one torque component due to the change of mutual inductance for this machine structure. This type of torque can be called mutual interaction torque, also can be called the main or primary torque. Note that this mutual inductance torque is generated in almost all types of machines. It is worth to mention again that this machine structure, which has uniform air gap, represents the basic structure of the practical induction machine. Let's conclude this lecture at this point and we will continue in the next lecture. Let me know if you have any question. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any lecture. Thanks for listening. I am Ihsan al-Nabi and it was pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.